Hey sisters, uh, I came up with seven ways that we as black women may self-sabotage. And um, it's something I want us to work on together because I do fall guilty of that as well at times. First, let's talk about the definition of self-sabotage. Self-sabotage refers to behaviors, thoughts, and actions that hinder personal success, happiness, or well-being, often unconsciously. It can manifest in patterns that undermine goals, relationships, or self-esteem, often rooted in fear, self-doubt, and internalized beliefs. And that resonates really strong with me because I, because of however mentally the things, the, the shit I put up with when I was a young person, how people may have put me down or teased me or told me thing, negative things about myself, I internalized those, those beliefs. And it gave me a feeling of feeling, um, unworthy. You see, no one could tell me I wasn't intelligent. I was not articulate. That never hit for me. But because I was a heavy child and I was heavy and it, I was fat and black and a female in the 70s and 80s, um, I internalized a lot of that pain. So here are the, some of the ways that black women may self-sabotage. Here we go. Number one, the imposture syndrome. You feel unworthy or doubting one's qualifications despite evident success. You downplay your achievements or overworking to prove your worthiness. And I notice that as black women, sometimes we, we, we have this false humility where we feel like, especially if we were raised in strict religious communities, if we are Christian, we feel like we have to put on this uh, uh, pseudo humility and, uh, because of the qualifications. Listen, we all know that black women are the highest um, educated sect of people in America. And so, I mean, you can see I got a master's degree, a bachelor's, real estate, everything. You understand? But even in that, in all my accolades, many times we feel as though we have to downplay our greatness, downplay uh, who we are, or prove so hard. The second uh, way of some black women may self-sabotage is procrastination. You delay important tasks or opportunities due to the fear of failure or perfectionism. Let me tell you, perfectionism is the number one killer of your dreams. If you wait until you are thin enough, pretty enough, rich enough, whatever enough, you will never do anything. If you're waiting to till that book, you have you have edited your book that you have written 12,000 times. It doesn't matter. You can always do a second, third, fourth edition. Just do the book. Self-publish it. Some of you all, you procrastinating about damn near cleaning your room. <laughs> It's like, it, it, I'm telling you, if you wait until you're perfect, you won't do anything. That's why it hurts me when I hear young couples say, well, we're going to wait and, and get married when we have more money. You may never have enough money. We're going to wait and have kids when we have enough money. You That may never come. So don't put off your dreams because you want to just feel like you have to have perfectionism because that is not a reality, y'all. Um, or another thing under procrastination is hes hesitating to apply for promotions or to start businesses or pursue new ventures. And we just covered that. You're just waiting because you're afraid you're going to fail. Failure to me is the stairway to success. I don't fail down. I fail up. Tavis um, Smiley wrote a great book called Failing Up. And it really, it, it really shows that your mistakes don't have to make you go down but up. The third um, reason why black women may self-sabotage is people-pleasing. Oh, my God. People-pleasing. Delaying important tasks or opportunities due to the fear of... No, no, no I'm sorry. Pro prioritizing others' needs on the expense of your own personal goals and well-being. Saying yes to everyone but neglecting self-care and personal aspirations. I have neglected um, myself as a mother and as a wife. When I say neglected, I mean I'm always thinking of the kids, always thinking of the husband, and never thinking of Angela. And not only does that cause self-sabotage, but also wears you the hell out and you find yourself exhausted or over drinking, over eating, over, over everything that ain't good for you. And so for me, I became a people pleaser because I grew up in a household where my father was a very, I mean, I had great parents, but my father was a very controlling older black man from the South. And um, I, I grew up feeling like only way to really get his uh, praise was I had to damn near be perfect. And I became a people pleaser. And so in pleasing other people, you lose your voice. And as black women, we know that our voice, our thoughts and our voice are very important to us. Uh, the fourth way is fear of success. 
A lot of black women sabotage progress due to the fear of how success might change relationships or increase responsibilities, avoiding taking risks or stepping into leadership roles. There are a lot of black women who feel like, you know, well, well, my friends, you know, they they don't have or they may not have achieved what I have. Let me tell you something. You work for what you have and don't you feel bad about it. You know, growing up, I had a, a, a group of friends. I didn't go to school with them, but, um, you know, me and all my friends in school, we all went to, I went to private school all my life. And so then we were just drilled in our brains. You go into college, grad school, law school, whatever, medical school, whatever. But my other set of friends did not. And so at times they would try to make me feel as though well, you think you're better than us because you go to a private school or, or you went to college. And no, I don't think I'm better than you. You think I'm better than you. You know I may be better than you. I'm making you look at yourself differently because you know you haven't raised up the bar of your success like you could and should have. So don't let people ever make you feel bad because they, you feel like you're leaving them behind. Because quiet as it's kept, as you go up a ladder, when you're going up, you can't carry a heavy load or you'll fall back. You'll fall back down those steps. And I guarantee you, those people who you were carrying, they can't help pick you up to get you back up those ladders again. I promise you they can. Uh, then number fifth one is negative self-talk. Come on now, we do it all the time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm fat, I'm old, I'm this. Internalizing, limiting beliefs such as I'm not good enough, people don't like me, I'm always failing. Another way that we, six way of self-sabotage is we overcommit and burn out. Now this is for you sisters who think you gotta be at the church when it opens and when it closes. You are burning yourself the heck out and you need to stop. For those of you who just think like, oh my God, I have to, I have to do this. I have to have all these responsibilities. For me, I don't feel comfortable when I'm not doing, and that's not good. It is hard for me to sit my behind down and watch a freaking TV show. It is, I can't do it, but I need to. I don't need to be sitting there watching TV and ironing at the same time. Sometimes you just need to sit down. My husband says, just sit your ass down sometimes. The eighth way is avoiding help. Oh, we hear that a lot, don't we, sisters? They always say we're the strong black women when really we are more fragile than, than any other race because we put up with so much bullshit. So we have a strong face on the outside, but we crumbling on the inside. And the last way is settling in relationships. You're staying in unhealthy or one-sided relationships due to a fear of loneliness or societal pressures, believing they can fix or settle for a partner. No, you can't fix no man, honey. Take it from a 53-year-old woman. You can't fix no man, but you can fix yourself and you can fix how you respond to that man and you can fix the situation with that man and or women. It could be a friendship. You ain't got to stay some of friendships. Do you know how I many women I have cut off? And I don't know if it's just easy for me to cut people off. I'm an Aries. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but when I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. And so, sisters, let's just, um, let's just um, marinate on these and come back later tomorrow and I'm going to talk about ways how we can overcome self-sabotaging as black women because um, we're beautiful and we're great and I'm not saying that other non-blacks aren't but I can only speak to me and my sisters for what I feel because I live the experience so listen sisters y'all can and hey look y'all if you all want some of my uh, can y'all see them my wristlet keychains y'all go on my tiktok shop I want this to be like our solidarity thing. You understand? Like people have these resistance t-shirts. So all, all the sisters, we buy these keychains, these wristlet keychains with these beautiful melanated people on it. And um, it just shows that we are working on ourselves and we are drinking our water and minding our black business. I love y'all. Talk to you soon. Be blessed.